Hey, welcome to my channel, Plant Based Storm. I'm Stormy, and today it's Garden Tour Week 5. We've had a lot of things change and the first thing I wanted to show you was our peppers have really taken off finally got some hot enough weather that they like it well enough to say hey we're gonna give it a shot you can see how much they've grown in just five short weeks you may notice that one of our buckets is missing because we actually did harvest some potatoes and I'm going to put that clip in with this garden tour um, they were a little bit small so we're gonna wait a little bit longer and see how the rest of them do but we actually ate them tonight in our curry and they were really delicious all right so we got one of our five gallon buckets uh, one of six that we've got uh, and they've mostly died back um, and they've been looking like this for about two weeks now so we're gonna test one of the buckets and see how the potatoes are doing inside I pulled some of the dirt back away a while ago and did find a potato in there um, so we're going to dump it out and see what we got. There is our seed potato right there. That's what these grew from. And it's still nice and firm. Don't think these were quite ready just yet, but we're gonna cook them up and eat them anyway.
I believe that's all of them. So we're going to leave the other ones for a while. Um, probably a few more weeks, I guess. Uh, and just watch them and see where they are um, as we go along. And maybe we'll get some more. I'm going to take this right here and add it to our compost pile. And uh, so we can reuse it again next year. I've been able to get a lot of okra um, here lately. It's just really started coming in. Stalks have finally thickened up where they can withstand wind and all that kind of stuff a lot better. If you're not familiar with okra, you can see that we are chopping and dropping. You see all of the leaves in here that's already started to compost. But what you do is you harvest the okra that is growing closest to the bottom and you cut this leaf off and let it... Um, compost in the garden it just adds to the soil and cutting this means that it's not putting any more energy into um, supporting this leaf and it's going to keep it growing upward and producing more okra you can see that the sunflowers have really taken off they're about nine feet tall now and we're just really enjoying watching them grow and seeing how big they're going to get So I got to get down here where the sun is not in my eyes. Um, I know that you remember in the previous weeks me talking about all the rain that we got. Um, our tomatoes were struggling with all of that rain and uh, now that it has settled down they are trying to pull through and we're replacing what we have to as we go. We have gotten several um, tomatoes off of our vines so that's always a good thing. and. Um, we're just going to keep uh, replacing what we can and seeing how long we can keep it going before frost. As you can see that we have guard long beans coming up and they are actually starting to grow, which I'm pretty excited about because this was an experiment to see if they would come up because it is said that you should not companion plant um, sunflowers with peas or beans because it inhibits um, the growth sort of like a black walnut tree does like it puts out a chemical and supposedly other things are not supposed to be able to grow around it it's okay to companion plant uh, sunflowers with tomatoes they say not to do it with peas or beans but we thought you know what we didn't really have any other place to put them we're gonna run an experiment and see how it goes and so far so good so you can see the mess that we have here um, this is where we just replaced one of our tomato plants with a heirloom purple Cherokee. And maybe it'll be healthier. Um, you can see that it's got nice, beautiful, pretty green leaves. They're not all dried up and curled like some of the other tomato plants. So um, that's just, like I said, what we're replacing what we can. And we started that from a sucker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one was actually started from a sucker. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, um, whenever you're looking at the tomato plants, you can see like here's like the stem right here and it comes up and you have this branch that came off and this little piece that's in, in between the main stem and that branch is known as a sucker and you can pinch these off maybe. and whenever you put this in a cup of water it will actually grow roots and then you can put this in soil and start a brand new tomato plant um, without having to start it from seed it's just basically cloning the plant and it is so much faster than starting from seed especially whenever you're having problems like we have been with needing to replace tomato plants that we're having to pull out we don't have to wait for them to start from seed mama. and we can just clone what we have mama here are our rattlesnake beans and they are making their way up the trellis wrapping around nice and tightly and we're looking forward to continuing to watch these grow and we have actually finally had some of these center cut squash and they are super delicious i was learning and reading a little bit more about these you can harvest these whenever they are banana diameter or less and cook them up like you would a zucchini or you can let them go and cure them like you would a butternut squash and they'll last longer um, so they can store for the winter um, which is kind of a neat uh, multi-purpose squash that you can have in your garden. Our cantaloupe is growing and blooming and we need to get it um, tied up to the trellis so that it's not laying all over the ground but um, it just really took off all of a sudden and you can see this butternut squash it is really good. We've got a ton of butternut on here. They are so pretty and 
they're just growing all over. And we have really cut this thing back too and it is just a very prolific grower. We have some flowers that we planted from seed. Um, I've got them uh, planted uh, interspersed throughout here and we really don't remember what is what. So we're just waiting to see what kind of surprise that we get. I know we planted some coxcombs and bachelor buttons but I'm not sure like I said, which ones are going to actually come up. Here are our pink-eyed purple hole peas, and we're finally starting to get some blooms coming out on them. They're actually growing in trellising, too. These are a bush style, but they are putting uh, some runners out. And we have them pinned back as best we can away from the trellis. We've got string on both sides of them to keep them kind of pulled back to give the other things that we have planted in here a chance like here are um, our yard long beans that we're excited about and if you notice this right here this is our praying mantis Uthica and we are waiting for um, several mantis to hatch we have four Uthicas throughout the garden um, we had tried to hatch out three but they were ended up being duds because we had over 75 degree temperatures for several days in a row and uh, we felt like they should have hatched in that time period so we cut them open and they were all duds so one thing that we have been forgetting to show y'all is our avocado tree this was grafted specifically for our area i bought it from the master gardeners sale a couple years ago and we have protected on here our very first avocado that it is producing and this is something super excited because i know that i've heard so many people plant avocado trees and they never do produce anything so we are protecting this like it is our baby okay so these are some of the suckers from all of the tomato plants that i have cut off like i was telling you about earlier um, about how you can clone the tomato. So I'm starting all of these from suckers instead of trying to grow them from seeds so that we have something to replace our fading tomatoes. And these right here are Mary's Niagara ground cherries and they're sort of like a tomatilla but they are um, red or orange. They're like bright colored and you can eat them straight out of the garden. Tomatillas, you usually have to cook them because they're kind of toxic, but these are not, and they're sweet, and you can make pies, and you can make all kinds of stuff. I think I talked about this in the last video, but they've just come up, and then this is my one lonesome little pineapple ground cherry, um, and these are prized because um, they are supposed to have a really great sweet flavor. These are some Principe Borghese that we still had laying around that was started from seed. Um, I'm not really sure where we're going to put these uh, currently, but we have them if we need them. So that concludes Garden Tour Week 5. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with us. We can't wait to see you next week. Mm -hmm.